happy Monday, everyone. Hope you are staying safe and staying cool. Today I'm going to do things a little bit differently. It is going to be a bit about uh, the technical side of art today. Um, when you finish your painting and you sign it, what are the next steps? So, first of all, your signature. Let's talk about your signature. You need to make a few decisions when the painting is finished about how you want to sign your painting. If you're going to use your first name or your last name. You want to print it? Do you want to write it? How exactly do you want the world to know you as an artist? For me, my first name is actually rarer than my last name, so I always sign it with Caprice. And for many years, I was very, had a very teeny, tiny, tiny signature. And a lot of people didn't like that because, you know, when somebody's going to be investing in your work and give you their hard earned money to purchase one of your paintings, they want to be able to see that they have purchased a Caprice original. So I had to go a little bit bigger. And then I uh, usually pick a color from the painting to, um, you know, make it not stand out too much. For me, I don't want it to stand out too much. That's why I had done it. I had done mine so small for many years. Um, but you don't want it to be too flamboyant. I've seen artists whose paint, whose signatures are huge and a lot of swirls and spirals and lines and. For me, that's not what the painting is about. You do have to consider where to put it on the painting as well, because it does become part of the composition. Composition, Don't forget that. It has to be in a specific spot where it doesn't deter from your focal point. You want it to be there, but not draw your eye. That's not what you want everyone to be staring at first off. So, um, yeah. A lot of things to consider. Another thing I would suggest is um, take a photograph with your cell phone of your finished canvas and have a look at it on the little tiny screen. Somehow when you see your finished piece on the small digital screen, it kind of your compositional errors stand out and occasionally you have to add one more stroke. I, I know my students always laugh, but that one more stroke can make a world of difference between an awesome painting and an average painting. So just ponder it, live with the, your finished piece for a few days, look at it in different lights, and sometimes you will see that, you know, it's perfect as is. And other times you'll just see, I gotta add a stroke or two in this one spot. Um, so yeah, that is how it goes. Don't forget to ask somebody who you trust for a good critique. And it doesn't mean you have to take those critiques, but it's, um, yeah, you have to have the right kind of person doing your critiques for you though. Not everybody can, is that good at it. And then, um, after all those things are said and done, the painting is finished, the painting is signed. Then you want to varnish it with a retouch varnish, probably. Now, I say probably because that's what I use. Doesn't mean that's what you're going to use. I am an oil painter. And yes, you do need to varnish the painting to protect it from the sunlight, especially if it is being hung in direct light. The direct sunlight can fade the colors and alter it as can dark colors. If it's been stored in a closet for several years, dark colors, lack of light can also darken the pigments. Um, so varnish will help to protect that. And I use a retouch varnish. I am talking about oil paintings. If you have, uh, if you're painting with acrylics, phone your art supply store and talk to them about acrylics because I cannot give my expertise on them because I've only uh, done them on occasion and I've never needed to varnish them because I just play with acrylics. So, um, but 
your art supply store will tell you what your best options are. But for an oil painting, the reason I use retouch varnish is because it will, um, it makes it more like looking like a wet paint. It's not shiny, but it's also not matte. So I like the look of it. And for me, um, you, it works because you have to only wait for the paint to be dry for two weeks. And other varnishes, Damar varnish or whatever, the longer lasting, more um, long-term varnishes, you have to wait at least two months, something like that, month, like a long time for the paint to dry from the front all the way to the back. If you varnish it with those other varnishes too soon before it is thoroughly dry, then you can have your canvas mold. So this is the reason I use retouch varnish. Retouch varnish, you can paint in two weeks time. Once it's dry to the touch, you can go for it. And the other benefit with that is that you can go in and change it later on if necessary. You can paint over the retouch if you need to, which I have had to do on occasion. Um, the downside to this type of varnish is that it is not long lasting. It won't last you two decades. Uh, probably, I don't know how long it will last, probably five years. I'm not entirely sure. I varnish the paintings before I sell them, before they leave the studio. And I've never really followed up with that particular vein. Um, if any of my clients need to talk to me about it, please call me and I would be happy to re-varnish your painting. Um, but yes, that is how I varnish it. Now, the back side. Here we go. I hang the hooks one third of the way, if, the way down the canvas. So from the top to the bottom, this is a 12. So I've got it three, three and three. So I've got this hung at three um, inches down. I normally would, where can you see? There we go. Uh, I, it's sometimes better to hang it a little bit more in the middle here rather than that close to the edge. But this is a small canvas, so I only use the one whole D-rings and I use plastic wire. And it's super important that you um, pull it taut when you first hang it because this plastic coated wire is the best you can get and you can buy different weights of the wire. So if you are buying um, large canvases, make sure you get the heavy duty wire. And I like the plastic coated, but pull it taut because it does stretch. So when you first wire it through, um, make sure you pull it as taut because even this was not, it was super straight when I first did it and now it's already stretching a little bit. And this is only a nine by 12 painting or an eight by 10, I should say. Um, yeah, so it's uh, just make sure I don't know. There you go. You can probably get a bit more light. So this is just the one whole D-ring for small paintings. And um, then I have these little magic guys for bigger paintings, bigger canvases. And I'm trying to get it so you can see there. There's a little arrow. The arrow you want to point to the center of the canvas. So you hang this on the edge and the, the the wire goes towards the center. So um, pointing toward the arrow will point towards the wire. And this is a two hole one. So I when I start going to like 20 by 24s, I switch to the two holes. Anything smaller than that, I do the one hole, something like that. And then I have another little doom hickey that's like this with four screws, four holes. And those are for my really big ones. So anything larger than the 24 by 36, I usually do the four holes. And um, it's also important that you double loop the wire through the hole. Put it through there twice, pull it taut as you can. And remember on the bigger ones, you want heavier wire. And one other little thing, a lot of these uh, canvases come with these little, um, wooden chips 
oops, there's these little wooden chips and a lot of people don't know what they're for. But in the back of the canvases, let's see if I get, there are these little slots right in here. And you put these wooden pieces in like that and you hammer it on the end right here. You take a hammer and you can hammer it in and then you put another one in the other slot going the other direction and that will make the canvas taut. So you only need to use these little wooden pieces when, um, yeah, you only need to use these little wooden pieces when the canvas is loosey-goosey and not firm, taut like a drum. So I rarely need to use these. If you buy a good quality canvas, you'll probably won't need to use them, but they're good to have on hand because sometimes some weird things happen. So I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Thank you for the excellent questions, Lynn. And uh, if you have any more questions, drop me a note and I will fill you in. Okay, that's all for now. I have more planned for next week, so tune in again next week. Run long today, so bye for now.